colleagues, welcome to the EXCITE project and to this ITEEA presentation. I'm Tanya Lackey, an electrical engineer and a technology and engineering teacher at Boquette Valley Central School District in upstate New York. I'm one of the lead teachers on the EXCITE project. EXCITE, Exploring Computation Integrated into Technology and Engineering, is a three-year National Science Foundation funded project that intends to enable technology and engineering to become a prime provider of AP computer science in the nation's high schools. We are accomplishing this goal by adding real-world design activities to an exemplary introductory computer science curriculum. That curriculum, called the Beauty and Joy of Computing, or BJC, uses a block-based programming language called SNAP that was derived from the Scratch computer language. The BJC curriculum was also developed through NSF funding and has been endorsed by the College Board for AP Computer Science credit. EXCITE is now a component of ITEEA's Engineering by Design curriculum program. Materials are easily accessible and low cost, either through Bird Brain Technologies, Commercial Hummingbird Kit, or through even lower cost ITEEA kits designed by the project. I'm working on this project along with three other lead teachers, Matt Davis from Carroll County, Maryland, Chris DeHaan from East Lansing, Michigan, and Marnie Hill from North Carolina State University. We have led the development of enhancements that turn the BJC computer science curriculum into one with the kinds of hands-on design activities that resonate so well with technology and engineering teachers. We will now highlight some of the computer control and robotics design activities that Excite has added to the be beauty and joy of computing curriculum. First, Chris DeHaan will present an emergency medical station activity. Matt Davis will present a railroad crossing activity, and I will return to present a metro card activity. As you listen to our presentations, please keep in mind how computer science principles are conveyed through these hands-on engaging design challenges. Now over to Chris. The EMS station traffic light activity is a project that addresses a real world problem that students need to solve. As they solve the problem, they are exposed to various sensors that are found in either their Hummingbird Kit or ITEEA Excite robotic system. Students start to gradually write scripts for their assignments that will perform complicated tasks. This project is broken down into five sections. The first is the design challenge, followed by programming the traffic light, the call comes in, opening the garage door, and getting back to normal. The first section of the project is the design challenge. In this section, students will be introduced to the project that they are tasked with completing. The project revolves around an EMS station that is located on a busy street. When a call comes into the station, a buzzer activates that signals that there is an emergency. A traffic light located outside of the EMS station stops traffic in both directions. When it is safe for the EMS vehicle to leave the station, the garage door opens and the EMS vehicle enters traffic. When the EMS vehicle clears the station, the garage door closes and the traffic light goes back to normal operation. The infusion of computer science into the activity starts in the second section. In this section, students are tasked with creating their traffic light system. Students will use the three LEDs contained in either their Hummingbird or ITEEA Excite Robotics system to create their traffic light. Programming for this section of the activity progressively builds up to a fully functioning traffic light. Students start their program by getting the yellow light to flash consistently. Students are then tasked with examining the logical flow of a traffic light and programming that logic into their design, activating the red, yellow, and green lights in sequence. In this section of the activity, students are presented with the definition of an LED, which will be used later on in the project as part of their assessment. 
In the third section of the assignments, students learn how to program the sound sensor. The sound sensor will be used to detect when a call comes into the station or the siren is activated. The sound sensor will be used to start the chain of events that will change the pattern of the traffic light and open the garage door for the EMS vehicle. In this segment of the assignment, students are again exposed to vocabulary, this time for the sound sensor. In the fourth section of the assignment, the garage door opens, students start to get creative with their design. In this section of the assignment, students are tasked with building their EMS stations. Their EMS stations can be built out of anything that they would like. Old boxes or storage crates make an excellent structure for their designs. Students will need to make sure that the EMS vehicle that they choose to use for the project will be able to fit within their structure. Once the students have built their EMS station and know that their EMS vehicle will fit inside, they need to create a garage door that will be opened and closed using the position servo found in either their Hummingbird Kit or ITEEA Excite Robotics system. The garage door can be opened in a variety of ways but must allow for unobstructive movement of the EMS vehicle in and out of the station. In the final section of the assignment, Getting Back to Normal, students are tasked with closing the garage door and returning the traffic light to a normal pattern once the EMS vehicle has left the station and safely entered traffic. Should time allow, students are given the opportunity to write a script that will respond when an incoming call is detected. For this script, students will use the sound sensor to detect the incoming call. Once the call has been detected, the siren will activate and the traffic light will proceed to stop traffic. With traffic stopped, the garage door will open and the EMS vehicle will enter the roadway. Once the EMS vehicle has safely entered traffic, the garage door will close and the traffic light will resume normal operation. Hello, my name is Matt Davis and I'm a lead teacher in the Excite program. I teach computer science and technology education at South Carroll High School in Maryland. I've been teaching for 28 years. The activity I created is a railroad crossing and it is found in Unit 2 of the Excite BJC curriculum. Students learn how inputs from a sensor can be combined with what they have learned about conditionals to control outputs to operate a railroad crossing and to record to a list when the system is activated. There is also an optional activity at the end of Unit 2 that will ask students to use the data from the list generated to determine when a switch should be activated to allow certain trains to access a turnout. Students are asked to design, build, and program a system that will act as a railroad crossing. The system will use ultrasonic sensors to detect when a train is approaching a crossing in either direction. Lights and sounds will be activated and gates will be lowered using position servo motors. Time, date, and direction of travel will be added to a list based on which ultrasonic sensor is triggered. Once the train is passed, the gates will raise and the lights and sounds will be turned off. Students begin by connecting an ultrasonic sensor to the robot and explore how to measure distance. They connect lights and create code that uses conditionals to make the lights flash when the ultrasonic sensor detects a train is approaching. They should also become familiar with code that will make the buzzer on the microbit sound at the same time to act as the audible warning for the crossing. This image shows the early stages of a student design crossing using a 3D printed model train and materials from the technology education classroom. Students then explore how the position servo motors can be controlled. Code is created that will operate the servo to close the crossing gate when the train is detected. This photo shows students testing their design. When the ultrasonic sensor detects that the train has passed, the servo motors open the crossing gates and turn off the lights and buzzers. Uh, the previous pictures that you have seen were taken during the fall of 2019 semester, and these are students that were some of the first to have an experience with this activity. Based on which ultrasonic sensor detects the train, time, date, and direction of travel will be added to the list that records when the system was activated. Teaching computer science principles virtually has certainly presented challenges. 
Robotic kits were distributed to each student in the fall of 2020 class, allowing them to work with the robotic activity while at home, learning virtually. There were many very creative solutions to this activity. In this video, you can see a student developed activity using materials that were available at home. Students will have the opportunity to revisit the railroad crossing activity in the optional projects found at the end of Unit 2. At the end of the fall semester this year, I asked my students three questions. What did you enjoy the most about this course? What do you wish you could have spent more time working on? And what will you remember about this course in 10 years? This response was from a female student who um, I know uh, did work very hard in the class. Um, she was certainly challenged, but she met the challenge and was very pleased to see this type of response coming in from her. As for teacher reaction to this project, it was just way too much fun. While we were working with students on this project, administration walked into my room and asked what we were doing. And my response was, we're playing with model trains. But then I went on to explain the purpose behind it, and that was understood. At home, I also had the opportunity to work with my daughter as I was building my prototype. I asked her to help me to build the Lego structure that held the lights, sensors, and servos. And that was fun to spend time working with her on this project. Um, I also found myself drawing and 3D printing brackets to hold some of the sensors and later finding that the website thingiverse.com had many things already available to download and to use, such as the trains and the track. And um, they also had some brackets to hold sensors as well, and those were in the shape of Lego blocks. And so they clipped nicely into the Legos that we already had for the project. And I also knew that I was having way too much fun when my wife called me out for the number of items that I purchased to go along with this project. Hello, my name is Tanya Lackey. I'm an electrical engineer turned technology and engineering teacher. I teach in a small rural school in upstate New York. Boquet Valley Central School District is in the heart of the Adirondack Mountains. I currently teach technology and engineering to all eighth grade students. And I also teach several high school electives such as digital photography, video production, design drawing for production, intro to computer science with a concentration on Python, and AP computer science principles where I have incorporated robotics and computer control activities into the BJC curriculum. I'm going to walk you through the Metro Access turnstile activity, which the Excite team has incorporated into the BJC curriculum. Unit three of BJC is dense and challenging. Adding computer control activities that students can relate to makes learning difficult concepts such as lists, conditionals, and binary less like work and more like solutions to real life activities. In the Metro Access activities, students use light sensors to generate a binary code that is converted to decimal and then used to look up a particular item in a pre-generated list. Using that information and conditional statements, turnstile gates are controlled by servo motors to open and close. Using top-down design, we can break the project into smaller projects. First, the system will read a barcode off the rider's Metro card, which is simulated by holes punched on an index card. The holes correspond to a binary code that is then converted to a decimal number. Second, the system uses the decimal number to pull the rider's contact information and the Metro card expiration date from a pre-generated list. Third, the system will open the turnstile gate if and only if the Metro card is not expired. If the card is expired, an error message is sent and the gate remains closed. This slide includes several pictures from a student's project. The student used three light sensors taped to the battery pack of the Hummingbird robot kit. The student used popsicle sticks to represent the turnstile gate. The sticks are glued to the servo motors. The student created the gate from a tissue box and cardboard. In the bottom picture, you can see the index card with the punch hole pattern used to simulate the Metro card. This is an example of the snap code used in this activity. On the left side, the light sensors are used to generate a binary code. 
The mathematical statement in green converts it to decimal. On the right is code to check whether or not the Metro card is valid and has not yet expired. When students have an opportunity to work on a project they can relate to, they are more engaged and they find it fun rather than work. An example of learning through play. Here are a few examples of student reactions and feedback to the Metro Access activity. One of my favorites is, the project gets me off the computer and I can really see the outputs in action. But another one, I had a student who doesn't typically take technology classes and really enjoyed uh, seeing their artistic side in this project. Where does Excite go from here? Our next steps are to offer up to more schools going forward. Next year, we'll have four additional schools involved in the project. We hope following that to expand to include universities and schools nationwide. For further information or to join this project, please contact our project director, Tony Gordon, at excite at techlit.org.